Okay, today's video will be featuring the 15th iteration of my 3D printed speaker series, with this version respectively called Project Aquatune. The 15th iteration is housed in a ported speaker box with an internal volume of approximately 5.3 liters. This volume accounts for the loss of space from ports, driver, and internal supports. The box was designed in sections to accommodate the print size of my printers, as the box is larger than any of my printers in its longest axis. So the box and lid was split into two pieces for easy printing. Internally, the box houses two ports and two diffusers to help eliminate standing waves, which I'll have to test their effectiveness later, as you'll see. Like all previous drivers, version 15 uses modular construction for a rapid part changes that reflect the rapid nature of prototyping available from 3D printing. The chassis of the driver was constructed using PLA this time. The heat-centric parts, though, such as the former and magnet cooler, are ASA-based. The motor is an underhung design, and I'll touch on that again later in more detail. It also uses 48 N52 Neo magnets, which is comprised of 16 sets of three, and they are arranged around the center with two sets of three in line with each other, forming eight sets of six. It's very confusing, I know. The plates used are 3 8 inch thick for top and bottom, and multiple eighth inch plates make up the center pole. The diffusers used in this build were designed around the fact that I'm using additive manufacturing and can create very complex shapes to hopefully reduce standing waves in the internal volume of the box. They have a lattice structure created from a cross section of triangular cutouts. These 90 degree intersecting triangles create a pattern that can hopefully disrupt any standing waves and improve the sound coming from the internal volume. The inside of the box is more complex than any previous versions of my speakers. I'm trying to embrace the nature of 3D printing to create shapes that 3D printing really excels at, while at the same time venturing further away from more traditional box designs. I started with designs that were made to be built with MDF. Um, moving away from that means utilizing lattice structures like the diffuser and the port shapes that flow together without seams and use flared ends while not being attached to any of the walls. The port for this enclosure was calculated using 5.3 liters of internal volume and a desired tuning of 70 hertz. The using these parameters with two ports at 31 millimeters gave me a desired length of approximately 150 millimeters before any of the flares were added to the ends. The motor of this driver is built around version 14's vented design. It uses far more magnets and is significantly taller than version 14 though. It uses three stacked magnets to gain height, as well as increase saturation in the plates. The core components, though, are still similar to version 14. I'm still using laser cut plates, however they are thicker this time to make the underhung design function properly. The pole uses six small plates and a large thick top pole plate, as it's cheaper to stack plates than machine a one-piece pole. Um, I'm not made of money, unfortunately, so I do have to do things the cheap way. Everything was assembled using printed guides to ensure concentric alignment, and then it was bolted together with a 3 8 grade 8 bolt. The cross section lets us see a lot about the design. For instance, the surround uses a traditional woofer style profile, while the spider is a very non-traditional style. We can also see the underhung nature of the motor as the coil is shorter in height than the top plates in the motor. The former has a built-in guide to ensure the correct height of the coil within the motor, the section view also lets us see the height of the magnets as well as the crush system used to retain the spider. Those are all the main changes I made for version 15. I don't think I'm going to be building on this design any further as version 16 is already in early prototype stages and I'm trying to really change up the motor design and version 15 is just not an efficient driver either. Um, we'll see that kind of later on in some of the tests. Regardless, we'll still have a play test and a review of the TS parameters and frequency response. And I'll also show how adding in the diffusers changes that response. Um, but yeah, the play test will start shortly with the build montage as background footage.
So we're over in DATS looking at the TS parameters. We can see that I do have this hump again, which I'm wanting. I would really like it to be up higher. That's not happening though. Um, but looking here at the TS parameters, it's a three and a half inch driver. And this, this is what I was talking about, how it not, is not a very efficient driver. It's only producing 66 watts or 66 decibels per one watt supplied at one meter, which is not great at all. So that's kind of why I'm just scrapping this design before I invest too much time. Uh, it's an eight ohm coil. Resonant frequency is sitting around 50 hertz. Uh, electrical mechanical parameters are all seeming within where they're supposed to be. The moving mass is coming in just about 15 grams. So that's not terrible for as thick as I made some of these parts. Here is the um, Excel spreadsheet I'm using to do all of the speaker tuning with. I forget what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. But we can kind of see all the parameters that I put into it. I'm using this graph so we can kind of see the predicted response of this enclosure. And then we'll compare that to the one coming up here in just a few moments. But you can pause here and take a look at this if you want. Okay, so now we're in REW, looking at a lot of graphs that probably do not all need to be up at once. Okay, so this is all near field. The red line is without the diffuser installed, and the orange line is with that diffuser installed. So we can see that that diffuser actually gives me a tiny bit of a boost right here at the resonant frequency of the box where it's the highest performing. So there's a trade off here. The red box actually stays louder, lower. I'm assuming that's just due to the increased internal volume. That diffuser does take up volume, so it would make sense that it sacrifices some performance in these lower octaves down here. But overall, that diffuser does help give it a better peak performance here at that 90 hertz range. So it's not exactly perfect, seeing as how you want more of a flat response, kind of a taper down response. But it is showing improvement by having that diffuser in there. So now we'll look at far field. So this is the far field. The green is without the internal, and the blue is with the internal diffuser. And we can see all the way through that diffuser is actually helping as you get further away from that speaker. That diffuser is helping to make this speaker perform much better throughout these lower ranges. So that diffuser definitely did what I was wanting it to do, and it helped improve the efficiency of the speaker. All these tests were performed with 0.5 volts internal or 0.5 volts of supply to the internal 8 ohm load and yeah the this was about three feet away or one meter um, and then the near field was probably about two and a half to three inches away from the center of the cone we'll compare near field and close field just to kind of give you a, an idea of the difference between the two um, sound does fall off at an inverse law so it's expected to be the further you move away from it the quieter it gets and that is shown here so yeah that's kind of the frequency response of this box so we'll uh, have some closing statements and yeah that'll be it guys thanks so much so that's all for today the files will be up for free for anybody wanting them and again, thank you guys so much for that first 1,000. It means a lot.